so welcome to module three, where we're going to discuss um, the subject of lazy evaluation. Um, so we're going to see lazy evaluation in a few different ways uh, by using functions to delay computation, but we also see it as a way to control execution. Uh, we're going to see lazy evaluation as a way to encode uh, large scale or infinite data structures. Um, and finally, we're going to study functional patterns applied to uh, delayed evaluation. So let's start with um, where we've seen evaluation. So if you recall how a function application works, right? You have a function call. Uh, let's say you have, um, let me close this, code, bracket, oh, wait, delay, dot record okay so if i think about this example where i do lang bracket right um, and i have some function call so sign of three pl plus five right we're calling function f uh, sin the sign uh, and we're passing an expression um, that means we need to evaluate the arguments from left to right right so if i had two arguments uh so let's say it's not this power work I don't know, let me see. Bracket delay. Is it power? Does that function even exist? Otherwise we'll just do addition. Okay, power doesn't exist. I don't know by heart how do you write that. So maybe exp. Nope, okay, let's go back to multiplication. So if I want to call multiplication, as you've seen in, you know, starting le lesson one, we evaluate things from left to right. So in order to call fu this function that performs multiplication, we have to evaluate all the arguments and we have to evaluate them from left to right. But this is not always the case, right? As you've seen, if we have something like uh, end, um, so if you recall, if you do an error, uh, and let's say you want to write 10, 10 will not show up because there's an error in between, right? So I, I created this error foo, uh, which is appearing here. Um, but if I do uh, if if I do an and, and I do if I have a false, and I write um, <coughs> error because the evaluation of um, and is um, not eager. It means that it's not the case that it's going to evaluate everything before it's as executed as is the multiplication, right? As is regular function application. So end is a bit special in the way uh, evaluation works. So what we do is we evaluate each element at a time, um, similarly to um, a function call. However, we stop and abort the evaluation once we get the first false value, right? So in this case, error will never uh, run. So you don't get the error, right? But if this were an OR, you would get an error because the, the first element would be skipped, okay? So this is a form of delayed evaluation, right? In the sense that um, we are delaying the evaluation of the second argument uh, once we evaluate the first one. So, so basically short circuiting is delaying the evaluation of some terms. Whereas here, let's just say that evaluation is un unconstrained, right? It, you have to evaluate it from left to right, whether you want it or not. But here you, you, you can, um, there is some form of control happening, right? Or some, some form of, of um, it's not direct. So we can think of this as a form of lazy evaluation where, where some values are, are not computed. So lazy in the sense that you don't need to execute everything. And eager means you have to execute everything that is available, okay? So that's what the eager versus lazy means in this, in this context. Um, so we've seen examples where, where the um, lazy evaluation works, right? So we've seen um, this example of factorial. Uh, and now if I ask you, okay, so how would I Let's say I wanted to implement uh, the conditional as a function. Oh, well, I could do that, right? One way I could do is I could do uh, define, let's define an if that takes a Boolean and then takes a left-hand side and then takes a right-hand side. 
so the first thing we could do is, um, well, we could call a cont, uh, and we could do cont, uh, if b holds, then call all l, and then otherwise call r. So this would be a way to implement if. Um, and if you were to uh, re-implement the factorial, let's say I want to do the factorial of 10, um, let's call this v2, v2, let's call this v1, call this v1, Okay, so let's say, um, so this 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 part. What I was trying to say is, um, evaluation of logical connectives is uh, lazy in the way that it's not, uh, as in contrast of of being eager. So if I try to implement an if as a function, so let's say I implemented if, and I said, well, the implementation of if is just calling con, but this is still a function. If is still a function. So if I try to replicate, and I would just if I were to write. Um, if according to the function I just created, right? Oops. So I would do, okay, so in this case I have one, otherwise I have uh, this, right? If I were to write conditional of 10, what do you think would happen? So maybe pause the video and try to answer that before I run it. So I'm going to comment this out just to make sure everything is running. Okay, so I get this value. What do you think happens if I run, if I uncomment this and run it? So if I run it, you see I get the first value, that's fine, but then it just sits here. And why is that? Let's try to understand why it's that. The reason is, um, if I try to implement it with a function, right, a conditional, now evaluation is going to be eager, which means that the b the, the condition and both branches will be executed whether I want it or not, right? It will be eagerly e evaluated. So when I call if, I'm calling, I'm evaluating the condition that I want, but I'm also evaluating one and I'm evaluating the recursive um, step, which means that factorial is not uh, conditionally recursing. So what do you think is going to happen? What's going to happen is that your factorial is going to recursively run and whether the base case is hit or not, you're still going to run it recursively over and over and over and over and you'll get the factorial of negative numbers going down, down, down. Why? Because you're not uh, delaying the evaluation of the else branch, right? You're not evaluating the, you're not uh, delaying the evaluation of the then branch neither, right? So in that case, for factorial, you would get endless loop. Okay, so how could we work around this limitation? Well, one way we could work around this limitation is by, um, well, first of all, don't call version two. Second thing we need to do is maybe um, we re-implement if, so instead of being this if that is broken, let's call this if v1. v1 is broken, so now let's write a v2 that is broken. Okay, so what other way do we know that we can delay evaluation? If you think about it, try to answer this, really try to pause this video and, and try to think, what other way have we thought that we can use to control evaluation that is not using conditionals? Okay, I'm gonna resume. So one way of doing this is by using functions, right? If you, the body of a function is effectively delayed evaluation. When you call it, you're explicitly saying you want to run it. So if our L and our A R would be, uh, were, uh, functions, then this would become possible, right? So in this case, what we want to say is if the condition holds, then run L otherwise run R. Okay, so notice the parentheses mean call, and there are no parameters because we decided. So there are no parameters here. Okay, so now we can rewrite our factorial to factorial v3. Okay, let's call this factorial. Oops, this should be v3. 
no, this is V1, sorry. And now this is V2, and this should be V3. However, now this should be a lambda of something that takes no parameters, right? And now, now the recursive step is not running. It only runs if you call this lambda, right? So now if we call factorial v3, let's see if it works, if I did any kind of mistake. Yeah, it worked. Okay, so what we're doing here is we delayed evaluation by creating a lambda, right? Because as we know, when we declare a body of a function, it doesn't run immediately, you have to call it. And the way we call it is by passing that function to if. So we've seen functions being used as parameters and here function the parameters are being called. Okay. So this is the, the example I just showed you, and that would be another way. So um, actually in record, this pattern is so common that when you have a lambda without parentheses, you actually call that a thunk. And you can even, you even have syntax for it. So if I want it, I could just write um, thunk, and that is equivalent. Okay, it worked, right? So this is the variation where I, instead of calling lambda open in close parentheses, it's exactly the same thing, they, they mean the same thing, and you call them. So this is just an abbreviation. Uh, there you go. So in our next video, I'm going to cover uh, promises.